Hey Luke here with catsandcarp.com and I'm going to show you how to catch catfish, how to clean catfish, how to cook catfish. A lot of great tips and tricks if you're just getting into catfishing or if you've been doing it for a while. If you're catfishing, a good rod holder is worth its weight in gold. It helps you detect bites better and keeps your rods from getting pulled in the water. These rod holders also have flashlights and cutting boards attached to them and I made them myself. These rod holders are a great do-it-yourself project and I'll put a link in the description to a video where I show how to make these. So let me show you the rods I'm using. Um, I've got two Shakespeare rods. They're both pretty much the same rod, just different names and different colors. This is the Contender from Shakespeare. It's a seven foot rod, medium action. Um, I think it's got something like 15 pound line on it, 12 pound line, something pretty beefy on it. Um, and it's a combo that cost me $30. The rig I've got on is what's called a high-low rig. This is a really popular rig in saltwater fishing, um, but we use it for catfish all the time. It's basically these two wire arms that swivel about, and you've got uh, just a little hook with some leader attached to each uh, one of these arms, and on the end you clip on a pyramid sinker. All right, let me show you my other rod. Once again, it's a very similar rod. This is from Shakespeare. It's the Alpha Big Water. It's seven foot medium action string. Uh, the mono on here feels like it's about 12 pound line, 10 pound line. Um, I got this for $29.99 at Dick's Sporting Goods. I've got a four aught circle hook. I think it's a Gamagatsu here. Got about 20 pounds of mono leader, a swivel and then I've got a one ounce egg sinker. Just a really great basic catfish rig. This is the most common rig I use. A four aught circle hook is really good for decent sized channel catfish. You know, around the four pound range. If you got bigger fish, go to a bigger circle hook. If you got smaller fish, go to a smaller circle hook. Also, almost all my hooks are snelled with a knotless knot. If you wanna know how to tie that knot and some other knots, check out this video. The bait I'm using is a frozen bluegill that I caught previously. I've cut the head off and I've cut the body up into sections and I'm cutting out the gut pouch to make these nice little cubes of bluegill meat. Whatever bait you use, you want to make it bite size and you want to leave plenty of hook point exposed so it doesn't interfere with the hook penetrating into the fish's mouth. I like to hook the bait through the back part of the bluegill meat because it's tougher and doesn't come off the hook when casting. Once I'm casted out and I've got my rod in the rod holder, I like to put on a bite alarm. These little bite alarms are like five bucks for uh, half a dozen of them. They work really good and they help me not only detect bites, but allow me to pay attention to my kids who were with me for part of this time. They're running around having a good time in the water. I gotta keep an eye on them and I can't watch my rods. Bite alarms are also good for night fishing as well as parenting. So I have a lot of people ask me how to unhook a catfish. So this is a circle hook, okay? Circle hooks are a little different than J hooks. You can't just back them out like J A hook says. You have to twist them out because they're kind of like a spiral. So they twist in and you gotta twist them out. So you get down in here and you grab it as low as you can and you shake. And there you go, pops out. Just gotta twist it out. If you try to back it straight out, it won't come. So you just twist it out. Look at this nice little beauty. See man, this is the perfect eating size catfish. You know, a lot of people will tell you that catfish that are big don't taste any good. This isn't really true. But, think about this. This is one meal for my family here. Two nice great fillets. This works perfectly. If I were to catch a bigger catfish, I'd have leftovers. You're much better off catching a small one, eating it all up, and then when you want another one, go out and catch another one. That'll be much better tasting than catching and keeping one big one and then having a bunch of freezer burned frozen fillets in your fridge. I also have a lot of people ask me about how to hold a catfish because they're worried about getting stung or they think they're dangerous. A lot, of, a lot of people think the whiskers can sting you. That's not true. The whiskers are just these soft little fleshy things. They're like noodles. They can't do you any harm. Right here, there's a spine, a pectoral spine. You can see how it's 
hard, and it's kind of sharp right there, okay? But it's smooth everywhere else. And there's one on this side, and there's one on the dorsal fin right there, right there. There's a spine too, okay? And when they thrash around and jump out of your hands like that, that's when you get stung, okay? They can go in your leg or whatever. So they have kind of shoulder blades right here. It's hard, okay? So I, on little ones like this, I squeeze them with a, hand, with a finger on either side of the spine, my hand there, and you have a really good grip on them, okay? And then they can't get away from you. Controlling the fish is the number one way to not get spined. Additionally, the smallest fish have really sharp spines. Big catfish have dull spines. This one's some kind of medium. Another great catfish. Oh, a nice channel cat. This one's a little skinny though. I'm gonna let him go. I've got my fish. I'm gonna have some nice fillets. I don't need any more. Well, as the saying goes, there's more than one way to skin a cat, but this is how I like to do it. I've got this uh, one by 12 with a big old lumber nail sticking out of it. And I take a clamp and I simply clamp that to the tail, to keep it from moving around. And I got another clamp. Okay. This is the biggest of the two catfish I caught and it weighs three pounds, 14 ounces or 1,782 grams. Now I've got it on the scale because I'm gonna show you how to salvage a lot more meat than just filleting alone. Step one, get your knife sharp. I've got one of these Dexter fillet knives. Love them, the great brand, not too, uh, too expensive. Put the fish's head on the spike and I start cutting the skin around the skull and the shoulder blade. So all the bony part, right where the bony part meets the fleshy part, just cut through the skin. Don't need to cut deep, just the skin. Then I take a pair of needle nose pliers and I start pulling that skin off. And if a little meat comes with it, I use the knife to kind of separate the meat from the skin. And then I draw or cut a line right along the spine and just rip that sucker off like you're taking a sock off a foot. And uh, you can see here it pulled off a little bit of meat across the back, but not too bad. And that little patch of meat was easily salvaged just by taking it right off with the fillet knife. So once again, where a good sharp fillet knife comes in handy. Um, now, then what you do is once you have the fish skinned, you start working right at the top and cut as deep as you can all the way back along the spine. And you're gonna start the fillet here at the top in the front and kind of work it off working around the bony bits and you'll feel where it's soft versus bony. And then you go over the ribs and use the fillet knife to separate the meat from the ribs. Uh, and you keep going and then once you've gotten past the ribs, you can shove the fillet knife all the way through and then it gets really easy and then you just kind of pull the fillet knife straight back and it all comes off. Ooh, not the prettiest fillet, but it's off. So the fillets off this catfish is one pound, one and a quarter ounces, or 459 grams. So by only filleting the catfish, you're throwing away 75% of the catfish. We're gonna see if we can't do better. I'm gonna start by cutting under the chin. I'm gonna cut from the chin to the pectal fin, and you can feel where bone meets meat, and then we're cutting right along that line. And I'm gonna cut on both sides. Once you're done cutting along the chin, you'll cut from the pectal fin along the bottom of the ribs all the way to the anus. While you're doing this, be careful not to puncture any of the organs in the guts. You shouldn't have to cut through any bones to do this. And if you have any little organs or anything attached to the stomach, just kind of gently cut them off with the fillet knife and there you go. This is the belly meat right here. And other than these little fins right here, there's no bones. This is all meat. Right there, look at that. Almost an entire third filet off the belly meat. There's this membrane on here, but I just leave it on and eat it. 
it doesn't bother me one bit. But if that grosses you out, you can try to scrape it off. So you can scrape that off. And you can. Next, take a metal tablespoon and scrape it along the spine and ribs where the fillet came off. Whole spoonfuls of meat shavings should come off and you can get a substantial amount of catfish meat that was left behind by the flaying process. The catfish also has pockets of meat along the cheeks which are more substantial on bigger fish. One pound nine ounces, 707 grams. So oh, that's not too bad, that's respectable. Two pounds, eight and a half ounces for two catfish or 1,158 grams. So that is, a, that is a big meal. Now I'm gonna show you some great recipes for cooking catfish. Now don't get intimidated by the cooking. It's the easiest part. You've already caught, killed, and cleaned a wild animal. Cooking's easy. I'm gonna show you four recipes. Catfish cakes, catfish gumbo, catfish nuggets, and catfish po' boys. So this is going to make the crab cakes, this is going to make nuggets and po' boys, and this is going to be for the gumbo. Okay, for the catfish cakes, take the shaved meat that you scraped off with a spoon, put it in a dish and bake it in the oven about 375 degrees for about 5-10 minutes or until it's cooked all the way through. Pull it out, let it cool, and once it's cool, squish it up in your hands nice and, and even so it's just all mushed up. Then you're going to take uh, about 6 or 8 Ritz crackers, mush them up in the bag until they're finely ground up and you're going to add the crumbs into the bowl. Then you're going to take one egg and you're going to mix that in too. You get a handful of chopped onions, a handful of green onions, and then you're going to add the seasoning which is a little bit of plain old yellow mustard. Then do a couple dashes of Old Bay seasoning. This recipe is really flexible so don't worry about being precise. Then one dollop of mayonnaise and you're gonna mix it all up until it's nice and mushy. Now these proportions are not exact and I'm gonna put the exact recipe in the description. Um, then you're gonna take some peanut oil and put it in a, in a dish and you want it to be about as deep as about the thickness of the patty. This scrapings just from these two catfish is enough to make three patties. Now, Heat up the oil and test it with a little bit of uh, patty and once it's the right temperature it cooks uh, not too fast, not too slow, throw in the patties. They should be cooked all the way through in one to two minutes. It's not a lot of cooking on these. They should be a nice golden brown. Put them on a towel to soak up the extra oil and you can either eat them in a sandwich like a po' boy or you can eat them plain with a little bit of tartar sauce. For the catfish gumbo this is what you're going to need. It takes a lot of ingredients, but it's not complicated and it's hard to screw up. So get a hot skillet, put some olive oil in there, and throw in some cloves of garlic, and then some minced onions. Then you're going to add some yellow bell peppers, you're going to add some chopped up celery, and just start frying that sucker up, getting them all sweating. Then add a can of chicken broth, and uh, you just want to make these things swim a little bit. Add uh, a sprinkle, a tablespoon or two of flour to thicken it up. Just mix it really good so you don't have clumps. And then add some canned diced tomatoes and some tomato paste or tomato sauce. Mix it all up and just get it all bubbling and simmering and add a couple bay leaves. And then get a, a bunch of thyme and any other herbs you want and lay it down in there and let it start leaching flavor in there. Then chopped up okra, gotta have okra and mix it all up and let it simmer for about 20 minutes on a medium to low heat. Add your salt and your pepper and of course your cayenne pepper. Um, we're wieners so we put very small amounts in ours. Um, and then just let it simmer for a nice long time um, at a low temperature. About 20 minutes of simmering is what you want. How many herbs and spices to put in is a very personal thing so taste it at this point. See what you think. Okay, once you got it down and it simmered for about 20 minutes, add the chunks, the cubes of catfish, fold them in and let it simmer for another 10 minutes and you're done. Absolutely fabulous. Next, I got working on my catfish po' boys with these beautiful fillets. Now I've already done a couple fishing and cooking videos and I've got a great recipe for catfish po' boy. I'm gonna put a link in the description. So if you wanna see how to make this sandwich, check there. 
The catfish nuggets are also fabulous. Kids love these. They're very similar to making the po' boy, very simple and quick. I also did a video on how to make these. I'm gonna put a link in the description. All this food from two catfish. Got some amazing catfish gumbo. Two wonderful catfish po' boys with cilantro, butterhead lettuce, fresh tomatoes, fresh rolls. Got these catfish cakes. You can either eat them as is with a little tartar sauce or as a sandwich. And all these catfish nuggets with the MyPloy sweet chili sauce. All of this food from just two catfish because we filleted them right, we salvaged all the meat, and man, this is good stuff. So, at any rate, I hope this was uh, helpful and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, check out these great videos, including my playlist on how to catch catfish. Got tons of great videos explaining everything you need to know to catch great catfish. And I've got this awesome video on my top eight catfish baits. If you like what you see, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every week.